My name's Mike Dale. I'm a trustee of the National Warplane Museum. I also run Jaguar Cars in North America. And I'm the owner of the Percival Provost. It's the only one in North America that is actually flying. Uh, there's one in Australia, and I believe there are six in the UK. There were around about 400 of them built in the early 1950s. It was designed originally as a basic trainer for the Royal Air Force, who had decided they wanted a more complex aircraft than, say, a chipmunk or a tiger moth. The idea behind that was that you could weed people out relatively early in the uh, training process and um, know you were training the people who could really make it. One of the most interesting parts of this aeroplane is the engine, which was probably the last radial engine designed in the West after World War II. It's 550 horsepower, which it produces at 3,000 RPM, relatively short stroke. It's geared, of course, to the, uh, to the prop, and it's supercharged, a plus eight pounds. Obviously, with the weight of the aircraft, which is roughly about half a ton lighter than the T-6, this gives it tremendous performance. It'll climb at roughly 2,100 uh, feet a minute against about 1,200 feet uh, on, a, on a T-6. If you look at the front of the aircraft, you can see it's, it's well prepared for English flying conditions because it's got a windscreen wipers, uh, which are powered, of course, pneumatically. One of the reasons, of course, that the aircraft can roll at over 90 degrees a second is the relatively short wingspan, big ailerons, and, of course, they're assisted um, down here. Flaps pneumatically, pneumatically operated. They're down at the moment because we're below 275 pounds. that you see here, there are none in the world, and we had to construct many things from scratch. The whole of the wing fillets down here, right to the back and underneath, were all made on an English wheel, and it was the first time that the person had ever made them had ever done anything on an English wheel. We started to restore the Provost in uh, September of 1990, and it flew on July the 2nd, 1998. Had two people working on it, practically full time for the whole of that eight years, and it was extremely difficult because there are very few parts, there are no engineering drawings that we can get our hands on. Many of the things had to be remanufactured here in the United States simply from the old corroded parts. If you look at the markings, of course, on the left-hand side, it's got Pilot Officer Mike Dale, which I was when I flew the airplane. But on this side, my wife, we have AAGS Mary Dale. And that was the title she took on after she'd found that uh, we had roughly the price of two of our houses in this airplane. It stands for all-around good sport. <laughs>